Good day, YouTube. Bauble's on a lot here. Just coming up to one o'clock in the afternoon. And I've been playing around with a different way of using sunlight. I don't know whether you can see the little wisps of smoke coming out of there. From the top of the flare pipe on the insulated almost half litre Milo tin which is over the top of the, I think from memory it's about a 0.4 of a square metre of solar reflector and one of the first things that has been proved by today's test rig is that the roll, fold, crimped solder of a Milo tin is unable to cope with the heat of a solar thermal reflector. And of course, I'm gonna to have to put a slightly deeper thermal insulation skirt on the next attempt but as you can imagine the idea is to see if we can use solar thermal power to pyrolyze wood scraps into a burnable gas which hopefully may be collected and processed and used either in a generator at some later date when the sun is not shining and the solar panels have failed to charge the batteries and therefore we need to give them a bit of a thump charge in which case being able to turn sunlight into heat with which to pyrolyze wood scraps a commodity of which I'm pretty sure I have an elegant sufficiency right here where I live and turn the wood via use of concentrated sunlight into pure carbonized charcoal without having to burn it and without having to emit any carbon dioxide to the atmosphere leaving one with a source of carbon, i.e. charcoal, which can be scattered across the forest floor and thereby reintroduced to the soil as carbon, i.e. fertiliser. And rather than flaring the gas off while producing charcoal, which would release methane and hydrogen to the atmosphere, I think it might be a much more clever idea to have a go at uh, cobbling up something of a gasometer and then perhaps feeding the gasometer into an air compressor and a time expired LP gas cylinder which they won't fill for you in town which may perhaps possibly provide me with yet another way to store sunlight and use it on a rainy night to boil the kettle and make a cup of coffee or cook tea on or something like that because I do actually have enough water to rig up something of a gasometer so Presumably, perhaps, this is not actually an entirely um, 
fantastic time-wasting daydream. Solar thermal pyrolyzed charcoal gasifier. And of course, before you start laughing at me for thinking that I can start to run anything serious with half a square meter, just bear in mind that uh, I got a hold of this thing at the local deep water dump. As you can see, it's a 1.2 square meter parabolic reflector. And my theory is this thing may just perhaps be capable of pyrolyzing enough wood into charcoal and wood gas to be worth doing. And even if it's not, what I plan to do is use it as a proof of concept demonstration experiment. We shall see what we shall see. And one of the first things we should probably have a little bit of a look at, seeing as this thing's been going for about one and a half hours at the moment, I think what we need to have, have a look at is how much of the wood has actually turned into charcoal, if any, allowing for the fact that while we've succeeded in melting the solder, 160, 140, 147, 120, 165, 105, 119, 186, too hot, 122, 240, too hot. So it's too hot to measure on the bottom. And that machine stops working at 250 degrees Celsius. So I don't know. Did this get hot enough to turn any of the softwood offcuts into charcoal? Dum da dum 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 dum. Clearly, the way to check is to turn it away from the sun, remove the thermal blanket. Yes, it is interesting, isn't it? Hmm? You want to pay attention to what's going on too, do you? Okay, well, part one, line one. The crazy old human just hit his head on the windmill. So, what we do now is we remove the press fit gas tight seal lid, which was what caused me to think that maybe it was a good idea to use a little Milo tin as an experimental gasifier in the first place. Okay, so here we have the moment of revelation. Open up. And here's what we have. Definitely uncarbonized wood there on the top. So, as experiments go, I've learned something. I need more heat. I need more heat. How am so ever? I do suspect the principle underlying it is sound. Particularly when we see what happens when we loosen the wire and remove the gasifier to peer within. Okay, so here's what we get. First up, you can see the remains of my attempts to put lamp black onto the heat absorbing area of the gasifier. That didn't work, presumably because there's some kind of a hydrocarbon or plastic coating on the uh, tin plated steel sheet. Okay, so here we go. Well, that's been cooked a bit. 
that's been cooked a bit that's been cooked a bit more yeah some of that's turning into charcoal yeah bottom end of that is turning into charcoal that's turning into charcoal and the stuff at the bottom yeah that's done pretty well so as proof of concept I don't think this is too bad. I didn't quite have the lamp black on the bottom. I didn't have the insulation blanket going down far enough. But in one and a half hours I succeeded in turning some of this pine into charcoal. And therefore, I was pyrolyzing it. Because that's the word you use when you use heat to turn wood into volatile gases, plus tars, plus acetic acid, plus hydrogen and methane. And yeah, I think I want to play with this a little bit more. I haven't finished. Not yet any know-how this i think may be worth doing warbles on a lot to youtube who the hell was it who said i was a mad scientist hawkeye ciao